I've got to ask this question because I'm sure many, many people are thinking about it. Are you still part of Nullbyte? Are you going to be part of that channel? Are you going to be there? Or have you got some other YouTube channels? Uh, can you give us an update? Yes. So I started as a writer for the Nullbyte website with pretty much zero experience in hacking. And eventually I became the editor and I turned around and said, hey, if we want to stay current, if we want to stay relevant, we need to make video content. And they were like, no, you shouldn't do this. It is too expensive. Um, you know, it's not going to wow. work out. So I was just like, I had a friend who had just graduated from school who was really excellent at video editing. And I was like, let's do a project together. Like, let's start something um, and make it our best work so that we can really, really like pour our energy into something cool. So we made the first couple of videos. We put a lot of thought into them. And that was Nullbyte. Eventually, the company was like, all right, all right. We acknowledge that these are doing better than the articles. We're going to pay you like $200 for two people to produce a single piece of content, which sometimes would take like a couple days. Um, we would get to split $200. You should have worked at McDonald's. It would have, you would have made more money. Yeah, exactly. So it really was not a very profitable thing. And it, it really stressed us out. But eventually, we really started getting yeah. some traction. And after a while, we had videos that had millions of views. And that's when we had one of our videos taken down by YouTube. And we got a strike. You're a crazy hacker. This got some press attention. Um, it was in like uh, Bloomberg and a bunch of other like random kind of like businessy like publications. The company I work for now, Veronis, saw that our content was being, let's just say, not appreciated at the moment by YouTube. And while it was eventually restored, Nullbyte got into, or rather the parent company got into some financial trouble and they made it so that they stopped ordering episodes from us at the beginning of the pandemic. So they just weren't willing to pay us to make content anymore. So we could either keep making it for free or we had to find something else. So we started making content on the Hack5 channel, which has been great. They've been an excellent audience. And also a, just it's amazing to have someone who's been doing this for such a long time kind of guide us through the process of making new types of content. And then Veronis is my day job. So I get to do live streams twice a week now, which is super cool. And one of them is just a Q&A stream. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Hacking with Friends. So the phone is basically like using its maximum transmission power to like download these like huge files over and over and over. So I'm gonna go ahead and verify that this is the person we're talking about by checking the link here. We can even see that we've got their passport number. How does Thomas feel about the installation of Black Arch? Does he feel like it was uh, excessively complicated and that the errors were confusing? Or does he feel like this is something that beginners could sink their uh, claws into? The fact that I get to hang out with some of my best friends, talk to hackers and answer questions from beginners, and that's like part of my job, is honestly the kind of the best result of all of this. So no bite is no more, but uh, better things have come.